driving in Sydney, Australia. Hey, hello everyone, this is Ahmed Dan of AhmedDan.com. You're watching one of my Australia travel videos and today I'm taking you to several places in Sydney, Australia. In the last episode, we visited the Featherdale Wildlife Park and in today's episode, I'll take you to several places in Sydney. We'll cover areas such as CVD Downtown, Sydney Harbour Bridge, Sydney Opera House, King's Cross and many other places in Sydney I do not know the name This was a part of my two-day Sydney combo tour, Sydney City Tour, Sydney Harbour Lunch Cruise and Blue Mountains Day Trip. You can see the full Sydney trip and my other Australia videos in the links below. Thank you for watching this video. Forget about subscribing to this channel, forget about liking the video, there will be more videos coming up so I'll see you shortly. Which was thrust up about 200 million years ago. As that area was eroded, it formed this large delta. Exposed, of course occupied partly here now by 130 years. The reason behind the development of European Australia came on the back of the American War of Independence that ended the free movement of people, movement for elf people between England and the United States. Uh, due to the economic times, the, the crime rate was uh, out of control and so to try and discourage people from a life of crime they introduced the penalty of transportation to of course uh, those laws and of course uh, moving then into lower fourth street here past the garrison church to our uh, right hand side church of the holy trinity it was built in the 1840s from sandstone that they removed when they built a road or an access point between darling harbour and circular quay as the name that was used up until the 1960s when they established a new terminal around its circular quay. However, due to the popularity of Sydney as a cruising destination, the park of course here located close to the city centre. Now we will stop around further for photos to get away from sun glare. Now as we move beneath the bridge, this is actually the narrowest point of Sydney Harbour. The bridge itself is a hinged archway over this narrow section. The bridge construction took nine years to be completed, had 5,000 people involved in the process, where they sent about assembly in excess of 50,000 tonnes of steel. There have been no additions to the bridge since it opened in We are on our right hand side, the Urban Lands Department, of course, also here in this area. Uh, also to our right here, examples of some of the Victorian style terraces. Now they of course today, Victoria Music Building, which was originally built as the government horse stables. It was used actually as horse stables up until 1915. So after the advent of the motor car of a surplus, and I then uh, converted to become the Conservatorium of Music. Uh, next on our left here, now this is the city entrance into the Royal Botanical Gardens that are open sunrise to sunset and free to go through. So a great opportunity there to wander about and certainly uh, take a closer look at some of the some of the big sulphur crested white cockatoos. Uh, you've got lots of little uh, lorikeets, the honey eaters. Uh, you may occasionally see blue winged kookaburras, you've got uh, spur winged plovers, to name just a few. Here, of course, that's on our left is still, of course, all part of the botanical garden. So we looped a little word from the Aboriginal language, which means small kangaroo, well on the low. The naval base itself, its uh, official name is HMAS Cutterball. The Cutterball was originally a ferry that was operating on Sydney Harbour uh, that was commandeered by the federal government and became floating accommodation for the Navy. Uh, it was, however, lost with an incident that happened here in this area. The swimming pool that's on our left uh, is named uh, after Andrew Charlton. Uh, with his very boyish looks, was a very successful swimmer for Australia back in the 1920s. It's one of several public swimming pools that you'll find located quite close here to the city centre. So the, the finger wharf that's on the left here, of course, so redeveloped for housing, 
uh, including a motel. Uh, there are some executive apartments on the hand side. Is there for the visually impaired? So visually impaired can uh, come down and enjoy this area. We find, of course, that assistance for the visually impaired also uh, translates out into our currency. So with our banknotes, you may have noticed they are all a different size. The latest edition of our banknotes also now includes a tactile. So a raised section. And uh, the tactile inclusion on the banknotes and the cathedral here to our left-hand side. So, lights of Christmas, of course, also being here, so if that's uh, something that does interest you, so not something to be ashamed of, and your forebears were transported as a prisoner, but something to be proud of. Be part, of course, of the development of European Australia. Here along Oxford Street, now this is the centre for the LGBTI community. Uh, are just some of the facilities that you'll find here in Centennial Park. And that's the area, of course, that's to our right as we continue on. We still, of course, have Paddington to our left-hand side, so typically here being the older parts of Sydney, rows of these Victorian-style terraces. Started in Western Sydney, it's an Australian company. Uh, Frank Lowy he had a business partner at uh, four major river grocery stores. But again, normal hours are nine till six. There's certainly a, the original name gazetted by the British government for the town to be built was in fact Albia. But it was rarely used. People commonly called the settlement Sydney's town, uh, town after Thomas Townsend. Uh, he was the first Viscount of Sydney and the name was officially gazetted in the 1840s. But up until four straight timber, straight trees, that could in fact be used if a mast was broken on a tall ship. Uh, you will of course find, generally speaking, that for most timber, most trees around Sydney, due to the very poor quality of sandy soil, most of our native timbers grow with quite a twisted, uh, they're quite twisted. It's generally mostly hardwood as well. And obviously for uh, a tall ship mast, that's not particularly well suited something with a little bit of flexibility. Okay, so I'll have to go up and turn around to come back. So yeah, I'll just go up and round the loop, come back and park over here on our right. Here while we loop around. In that, that for your bikini bottom, there, there must be a minimum of 75 millimetres, so that's three inches of material covering your thigh. There were a couple of beach inspectors. There was one quite well-known guy here at Bondi. A keen eye for detail. Now, ladies, if you went down there, and there is no way, he looks a bit skimpy, he'd be happy to produce a tape measure to make sure your costume met the requirements. But there's no way you could certainly do that today. But back then, they got away with it. Now, skin cancer is one of the bigger health issues confronting us in the country. But look to the left. Okay, yeah. That's what you're looking at every day. Every day. So we're just uh, pulling here. We're going to walk up onto the park. So there's... Uh,
at home uh, with children in Australia, like some countries, all children attending education in Australia are required to kind of a system as appears in, uh, say, uh, Canada, uh, in the UK. And then uh, shortly as we move across George Street, we then get into Chinatown.